Hey guys, it's Blockchain Brad, and today we have a very special guest. It is none other than Daniel Wang, and he is the founder of Loopring. So Dan, thank you so much for coming on the channel. We really appreciate your time. Thank you, Brad. It's an honor to be here. So just a bit of uh, background information on, on Dan. He's very well experienced in the blockchain space. Uh, he has been involved with Google as a Google tech lead. And he obviously, as we've explained, he's had uh, a founding role in Loopring, but he's also been the co-founder and VP of Yun Rang Technology, Senior Engineer Director at JD.com. He's the co-founder and CEO of Coinport Exchange at, at, at a period of time in his work history, and also has experience as a Senior Director uh, and Blockchain Researcher of Zong, Zong, Zongan Technology. So, Dan, you are very well experienced in the space, and we're really excited to see what you're going to do with Loopring. But can you tell us just in a nutshell, for, you know, for people who may not know anything about Loopring, what is it? Uh, so we are building a set of rules, a set of data standards, and a set of you know, rules for those standards to be uh, propagated uh, to a decentralized outer relay network. So we call those rules, those standards, a protocol. Okay. So with those rules and standards, people can build their own decentralized token exchange on top of, you know, uh, existing public blockchains. So in a nutshell, Loopring is just, it just a set of rules that people can adopt and uh, make communication with each other easier. So Loopring is an open protocol for decentralized token exchange. Uh, it can be deployed on top of any blockchain that can uh, support smart contracts. So with Loopring, uh, developers can build their own decentralized exchange um, we, the Loopring Foundation doesn't have to run any server, any wallet for the, for the user. So in the long run, we are going to be uh, out of the, uh, we are not going to provide any centralized service. So um, with Loopring, the, the other benefit is that a lot of projects, they are doing ICOs, right? They issue a lot of tokens. With Loopring, um, they will be providing uh, initial liquidity without paying any fees. So that's totally free for them. That's amazing. I think that's, that's the future. You don't have to pay a lot of fees, right? Thousand dollars, even tens of thousand dollars to centralize exchange it, right? That, that's amazing. So I think that's something we really look into. And what's exciting also, Dan, is that you are what we would call in the business a blockchain agnostic protocol. So you're not actually, so people are aware, you're not a cross-chain protocol, you're specifically a protocol to try and allow for decentralized transactions to make sure the user can get the best benefits for efficiency and economy. What I like about your product also, being agnostic means that you're not conditioned by one specific blockchain and you're not working with one just you know, for a partnership. And that's quite lucrative potentially for your business in you know, the next few years because right now you're trying to make sure you hedge your bets in the best way possible. Yes. Oh, that's really exciting. So, so let's talk about the, 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 the question of why, because we talked about the what. So why is Loopring important and, and what's the problem that you are trying to solve? There are several projects working on decentralized exchange, right? And some of them are just building decentralized uh, exchange themselves and some of them like Loopring, ZeroX, Kyber, they are, do, they are working on the protocol. A decentralized exchange is really important because we see so many issues with the current centralized exchange model. Uh, I think security is the, the, maybe the most important issue right here, right? So we know a lot of exchanges get hacked. People's money are gone, especially when many, the, many of those exchanges are not regulated. There's no, really no way to get their money back. At least the, the majority of the money will be gone right. if exchanges got ever uh, hacked, right? And we've seen so, that with, uh, sorry to interrupt, but we've seen that with Mt. Gox as well, which is a good reference point for the past. Exactly. And I think in the future, it's not a matter, of, a question of whether those exchanges will be hacked. It's a matter of when. Right. Right. I think sooner or later, some of the exchanges, the biggest one, will get hacked again. That will happen. Yes. So Loopring's idea is to make sure that you can trade with your private key. By signing your order with your private key, you broadcast your orders to the relay system, and then only the smart contract can move your funds around, right? Wow. So that is the, is the only moment your fund will be, will be moved. So essentially, it makes it for a more secure transaction, a much more secure one. And more importantly, is it gives the user much more control and autonomy in 
their, their you know, their choice of uh, perhaps say their, which transaction they want to make and which one, which um, other token they want to transact with. And in, what's interesting about loopering, and it may not just be two parties, which we'll talk about later. It could actually involve more than two, and that is one of the game changers for loopering. Yeah, exactly. So um, you mentioned it's not just two parties; it's mm. like multi parties. Yes. So with, with the current deployment, it's like up to ten orders can be matched in a ring. And that's amazing. So that's, that's something um, really new, really uh, in, uh, innovative. Um, so we expect this ring matching algorithm can really provide more liquidity and minimize the price gap. Right. And I think it's great we mentioned that early in the interview because it's something that is sets at loopering apart, Dan. It really does. In that I've read a lot about OX and, and, and also of Kyber, but your capacity to work in that multi-party frame, that's going to be something that they're going to have to pay attention to because as we'll talk about, you're going to have connections with NEO, uh, significant connections, and that technology capacity alone is going to really put you in the, uh, a good position in a good light next year in 2018. So we'll talk more about that. Let's go across to applicability and strategy. So just in res with respect to second generation blockchains, we, one, Ethereum is well known as, as such. You're what we would argue as a third generation uh, protocol. So given that you're agnostic, what are the kinds of blockchains you're looking at uh, given that you have started with Ethereum? Mm -hmm. uh Trading with certain um, rules will involve the scripting, right? So it's better to be a blockchain with uh, a Turing uh, complete language, but it does it doesn't have to be. Right. As long as the language can express the logic clearly, I think we can do it. So right now our strategy is very simple. We want to deploy Ubering on top of the top ten uh, smart contract uh, capable blockchains, including like. Uh, uh, maybe EOS, maybe NEO, maybe Quantum, you know, as long as they have smart contract uh, capability, as long as they have a very good community, right. we want to deploy uh, looping on top of it. And but I think it do require, so, sorry, it no. do requires, it does require some modification because different languages, you know, different version machines, they don't, they don't, they have different uh, languages, right? So we have to somehow adjust the details right. a little bit before we can do the deployment. Yes, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, have, I've listened to a few other interviews you've done, and it seems that the first three you're looking at are Neo, Qtum, and EOS beyond Ethereum uh, in January. And that would make, uh, particularly, obviously, Neo and Qtum, given that they are in your white paper as clear supporters of your, of your protocol. So in January, can we expect that you are going to do a few other things uh, with both Neo and Qtum? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, it's down the road, but uh, a lot of details cannot be disclosed at this moment. So. Yes, but I appreciate. But one thing I can tell you is that uh, um, we are going to deploy looping on top of Neo and Quantum. That's for sure. That's something we are going to deliver in 2018. That's yes. for sure. Yes. And I wanted to ask you, Dan, given that that's in your white paper, that that connection was clear, that was not not something secret. Why did you choose Ethereum first and not Neo and Qtum? Uh, that's probably Neo has the best uh, documentation. So to get ourselves started really quick, and to get ourselves um, ready to really do some token trading, we have to have tokens, right? right. And uh, on top of Ethereum, there are so many tokens, so we can experience a lot. And it was a bit of an uh, experiment. Some, uh, yeah, yeah. That's exciting. And okay, so we'll, we'll, let's go. There, let's go there now with Neo. Obviously, Neo is not just a, a singular blockchain. When you look at the robustness, it's got now a trust network. It's also got a very strong enterprise link with on-chain. And also, you're close friends with Hongfei Da, which is a, 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 another benefit. But why did you specifically choose NEO for one of these um, in relation to trust? I really wanted to find out why is trust important? Um, you know, we are both Chinese, right? Right. We would like to work with somebody we really trust. Sure. And besides trust, I really like, uh, you know, the idea that Hong Fei had. You know, this the looping idea is really similar to what he used to have. The idea is called uh, super, and I cannot like remember super, the name. Superconduct, I don't know either. But. Yeah, superconduct, something like that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really um, 
similar to looping in terms of uh, the order is management uh, is managed off chain and the settlement is done on chain, right? Yes, that's so right. So we have this common understanding of loopring, and we both believe that this is the future for decentralized uh, token exchange. Yes, and so that's why. And Dan, it's so interesting you said that because Neo has a list of enhancements that they are going to put forward, and one of them is a super, superconductive mechanism. What is interesting also about loopring is that the, Hong Fei Dao has explained that there, that's going to support the overall system that uh, they want to deploy with the Neon Exchange. And the Neon mm -hmm. Exchange is essentially, you know, again, it's a very robust plan that they have to make transactions very easy. So are you, mm -hmm. are you, are you aware of the next exchange? Of course, I know the founder very well. Um, we met uh, several times and uh, we are also trying to form a partnership. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, in this crypto world, everything is changing so rapidly. Right? Yes. Right. So we, we really don't want to depend on any partnership for looping to be success. Exactly. So, so, um, so our goal is we are going to deploy a looping on top of NEO regardless of any partnership. I but see. if we can solve a partnership, we are going to be providing this very fundamental uh, pieces for their ecosystem. Sure. Because and, uh, Next is not going to be just doing trading. It's going to have some payment system, you know, have all kinds of fancy stuff. So exactly. I like, the, I like the project very much, but I think it's better for them now to build everything from ground up. Sure. If well, Spring is there to help them, I think this just you know, they just so just integrate looping into their system. Absolutely. Well, Dan, if we yeah. move across, uh, I'll take you to Seoul for a moment. Hong Fei Da was in Seoul talking about loopring, and he was doing that in the context of a global um, compliance framework that they're employing right now. They're working very hard to make sure that ICOs essentially can be compliant and legalized for you know for world markets, including Chinese markets, given the history that we've heard. He mentioned Bancor also will be involved in some of these processes. So, do you have any alliance, or can, do you, are you aware of Bancor being involved in you know, his overall plan? And does it relate to you at all? Uh, I'm not surprised. I think Neo as a global project, um, I think it's good for them to involve like Banker, uh, Tiber, even Zero X, you know, and maybe uh, Lupin. Right. But it's it's not a surprise. I think that's the right move for them to go. Yes. The one thing that I agree with Hong Fei is that you know the, I, we had this conversation like uh, six months ago before right. I did the ICO. One thing I uh, we both agreed is that the protocol should not be built into the blockchain. Exactly. So you should, as a, the um, uh, CEO, as the uh, any blockchain project. You should just allow it help people to build all kinds of protocols on top of your blockchain. Yes, and that's so we we welcome all kinds of blockchain uh, protocols together with Loopring to go to the Neo system. Yes, and that's one thing that Hong Fei Da does very well. He invites protocols in with the way that he's designed the architecture. And I'll just allude to one other thing you'd know about. I was speaking to the very reputable Ron Ron Chen recently. And he, as you'd know, is developing a, a system, for, uh, an operating system off chain in that it's the same concept. And it's purely based on efficiency in that if, if you keep putting pressure on the blockchain itself, then you reduce mm -hmm. the efficiency. And that's what sets a, uh, the plan you'll have with NEO as opposed to utilizing Ethereum because it doesn't have the same robustness because of the architectural differences. Would you agree? Well, um... Uh, right now, from this moment uh, on, I, don't, I think... Um, In the sense that, as you're aware, they're really trying to build out their technology, but they don't have the same architectural framework. They just... Ethereum is really trying, for example, with Plasma, as you know, is a technology trying to improve its tech. It's built mm -hmm. onto the blockchain. Um, and they are doing things off blockchain, but not as much. So right now, Ethereum is still the best blockchain, in my uh, opinion. Right. But in two years, it might, uh, who knows, we don't know. Right. That's why as a protocol, we, our strategy is to, you know, do not, do not gamble on one blockchain. We are going to default on all kinds of blockchains, right? Exactly. And I think Neo has a unique position in this competition because their, their uh, virtual machine is, was designed differently. Yes. Right? And their uh, consensus algorithm is much faster. Yes. Neo also has a uh, challenge 
uh, a challenge that Hongfei has to um, take to persuade people that you know the new model is um, superior to other uh, absolutely models. Yes, and people can move their dApps on top of uh, Neo from the current, uh, you know, maybe Ethereum or other uh, blockchain. It will take some time. Yes, and right? then, and then in uh, that respect, do you think compliance is going to be one of the keys for that? Because if this, uh, not if, but when, very soon compliance is going to happen for Neo, and that will mean they'll be the first very robust eco, um, blockchain ecosystem to have legalized um, ICOs globally. Do you think that's going to be a really big thing? That will uh, that will be a key factor for people to move their D app from one platform to another one. Yes, and maybe to to Neo. Yes. So that one, I think that's a smart move. I think so too. I mean, getting back to Loopring because that's the reason why we want to talk uh, is that because you're agnostic, you are actually benefiting from the growth of both Ethereum and Neo, and that's important. I want to make sure that the listeners know that you're you're going to benefit from all top five, all top ten if they all work, if they all flourish. But if some don't. You still benefit because you are again hedging your bets with the best of the best. And um, yes, I think uh, most of the current top ten blockchains will will die. Will you know one is in like five years. Yes, and we've seen that from the so, last you know technological bubble. You know, it happens the same exactly, way. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So, so I think our strategy is uh, is better for our investors, for our token holders. Yes. Uh, so no matter which one win out, if we keep uh, evolving the protocol, you know, uh, keeping uh, to uh, yeah, make the protocol to innovate. Better, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, thank you for clearing that up because that's going to be great for all the people who have Loopring or are considering it. Uh, let's talk about the transfer from virtual assets through across to the native or real world assets. So, how does Loopring help that? Because that's going to be the imperative in the next few years. Well, there are several companies doing this, uh, what we call the tokenization service. Okay. So they want to tokenize uh, physical assets, right? Traditional, you know, assets. I think that can should be done under regulation, and they have to uh, get some license. Otherwise, who who is going to you know believe them, right? Exactly. And after the physical uh, assets are tokenized, they can be traded just like any ICO tokens. Right. There's no difference from the uh, uh, technology point of view, right? It's, it's just tokens. Right. So those tokens can be traded with looping with all kinds of uh, existing protocols. Okay. Uh, so if that happened, the looping will be really important because you can separate the token issuing with the liquidity. That's right. two different things, right? Exactly. And the, the, sec the first part, truly relies on trust. And the second one is trustless. Yes. Yes. Thank you for making that clear. Just on that note of trustless moving across, it's a perfect sort of segue into Neo X. Neo X is just an example from Neo of a cross-chain interoperable protocol. Again, the conversation of protocol. One chain also has a very interesting protocol with their multi-third party compute. With re in relation to cross-chain, are you considering these kind of protocols? Obviously, you have alluded to that with Neo, because they have many. They have they are they are supportive of many. But have you looked into the direction of one chain and other blockchains with their capacity to support cross-chain interoperability? Um, we are going to invest a lot of our time and the money into cross-chain protocol, uh, right. but it's not a generic protocol. It's just a trading protocol between different chains. Okay. Uh, we are going to work with our partner. Um, in the uh, next year, but this is something we cannot disclose at this moment. But we are going to release uh, some news uh, in the near future. Well, don't forget to call me on that one, Dan. Uh, <laughs> I'll be. I'm looking forward to hearing about that. So let's move across now to the token with the LRC token and what's planned for the future. We, you've mentioned also in other interviews about um, the LRCX as well. So what? What? How does the token structure work? Very briefly. But more importantly, how are people rewarded through it? Well, um, I think this token LRC is really simple. It can be used as the transaction fees, the trading fees. Wow. Um, I think for normal user, it's the only uh, uses. So we don't pay like dividend, okay. right? So, so we are not a, You're not a, a security. 
No, and you're not a, yeah exactly. That's important for SEC and other things like that with um, the rules coming through. Yeah, we are, we are going to have a lot of problems with uh, regulators, you know. Yeah. So we are not going to be, uh, pay dividend, but we did in, invent uh, some uh, we call the long-term uh, incentive product, uh, program. Okay. Uh, so the payout is like uh, it's just if you deposit like 100 uh, LRC, maybe you get 200 or even more. Wow. So we we had that. Uh, incentive program uh, open right after our ICO, so it, it has been uh, activated uh, active for like uh, three months. Now it's closed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so for our token holders and for ourselves, the only way to make money is to wait for the appreciation of this of the uh, ERC token. And that's still an exciting thing because, as you know, Dan. That's happening, you know, daily in the sense that without trying to uh, like send the message of hype into the market, that mm -hmm. currently there's a lot of movement. And I think it's really great though that you mentioned that growth is the determiner because, again, it's it's much like any investment is that you're trying to be really savvy with the way you approach it. And you, from your approach, you're trying to ensure that you you again are best prepared and best positioned in this new economy. It's not about it's not a gamble. You're investing in the transition of, of technological change. Exactly, exactly. Um, sometimes we got a lot of pressures from uh, our token holders, you know, asking why the price is like flat for quite a while. Right. Um, but I really want to uh, tell people that you know all the investments require some patience. Absolutely. Right. Requirement. All, all the reward depends on your understanding of what you truly invested in, right? Yes. It's not just a pure fancy story. No. You need to dig into the project to see what they are really doing, what are they uh, going to deliver. Uh, they are not going to deliver some stories to make the, exactly. the token right, uh, worth a lot. So, so one thing for all kinds of blockchain technology uh, project, I think the code base is really important, mm. right? They cannot uh, you know, I, I'm not saying that PR is not important, you know, partnership is not important. They are both very important. But the, the prerequisite is that you have a solid solution right there in it's your a, code. It's essentially like a backbone of the body, Dan, isn't it? The skeleton, the skeletal system. Exactly. If you don't have that, you can't walk, you can't run. So I agree with you 100%. That's also why I supported NEO. Because again, it comes down to that base. If you haven't got the foundation, you have no house. And your foundation is very strong. Um, and that's great that I think that you've been so honest about that because some of the other companies we're seeing, I won't name names, you're seeing no foundation and you're seeing a house being built. <laughs> and um, yeah, so thank you for making that clear. Let's go across now to some comparisons because this is going to be important given that other people have invested in them. Let's talk a bit about what sets uh, Loopring apart from OX, particularly OX and Kyber, but let's go there because you know quite a bit about this. Mm -hmm. Let's let's go with the key features of what really what it can do, and just to prompt you a bit, um, we've got the things like the ring matrix, we've got the ring match, we've got automatic automatic trading. Let's talk about that mm -hmm. and really, and really dig dig deep. Okay, so I used to like uh, zero x quite a lot, and that project is really inspiring uh, to me uh, personally. Um, so we share some common designs. Uh, so both projects got their orders managed off-chain and sure. settlement off-chain. But we have huge difference in two ways. Um, the first is that we have this ring uh, miter, right? This ring miner role. Right. So with 0x, um, the, the orders can be marked as a maker or a taker. The maker submit the order first, and the taker will have to choose the maker and sign uh, with this maker. So you have... You can imagine that the taker wrap up the maker right. Right, with a signature and submit this order to the blockchain to get settled. Right. Looping, uh, looping miner, they actually pick two orders or more orders. They put them together and sign with his private key. Right. So, so in that ring or in that uh, group of orders, there's no taker or maker. I like that. Right. right. So, so I think the most important part is for, for the relay. So yeah. in yeah. both networks, 
0x, you can run a relay to run a decentralized exchange. With Looper, you can also run a relay to provide a decentralized exchange service. Right. But the 0x relay managers, the, the, those people who run them, yes. have to provide yes. liquidity. They have to have a lot of money so that they can make their own orders to, to match the user's order, right? Right. For example, if there are two orders that can match each other, the zero X relay have to create another two orders and match with those the users to orders separately, right? As two right. is that makes a lot but of sense. Three is one. That makes a lot of sense for you in that what you're doing is simplifying the process and making it so that both parties have a much more equal position and one isn't more. Is that what you're sort of alluding yeah. to? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And I think the, in in one sentence, Looprint's relay doesn't have to have money. Right. They can just have software or hardware, and then you know they run, they, they uh, pay for the electricity, and that's that's it. That's amazing. And when you translate a zero X relay, they do the Sorry. opposite. No, you go ahead. So the zero X, instead of doing that, what with zero X, with zero X, you have how money to run a relay. Right. So if we go across to the user, because it's all going to relate to them in the end, they're going to find mm -hmm. your process easier and more beneficial for them. Given yes, exactly. And with the uh, ring matching algorithm, I think uh, it's going to provide more liquidity, right? right? We can match orders that uh, cannot be matched by any other protocols. Right. That's, that's very interesting. Thank you. What about with, um, let's talk about the multi the multi-party capacity. That's another thing. We talked about it a bit before, but just how relevant is that in comparison to OX, <clears throat> excuse me, and Kyber or other, other like protocols? Is it the only one and, and why is this so good? Well, um, I think, you know, there's another project trying to do the similar thing. It's called the... Um, um, oh, let's not worry about the name. Don't, we don't have to worry if it's, a, if it's a different project, but if they are, that's fine. Yeah. Another project trying to do this, uh, they call it a, a pass funding, right? Right. Find a pass for your order so that you can form, a, get a virtual order which consists actually more than one order okay. to match with your order. Right. I think we, we have this similar idea, right? Uh, in the web paper, we call it um, a ring match or order ring. So, you know, in uh, centralized exchanges, they have this business called arbitrage, right? Yeah. So, uh, so you have uh, LRC to BTC market, you have LRC to ETS market, and then of course we have ETS to BTC market. Right. Right. And so people are trying to find this price gap and to do arbitrage between yes. those three markets. With Loopring, I think this functionality is built in. The relay is going to be going to arbitrage between any wow. two or three or even up to ten markets to do the arbitrage as long as they have this algorithm. So looping is built for arbitraging. And that's, and that's that, that translates to money. That's exactly, exactly. That's amazing. I mean, that that's something, and uh, rather than talk about the competitors who are doing it, it seems that you are one of the world leaders at the moment in doing this kind of protocol. Would that be fair to say? Uh, sorry, can you repeat uh, the question? <clears throat> sorry about that. So given that we won't talk about competitors, but mm -hmm. Let's be, let's be just real for a moment. Would it be fair to say that you are one of the world leaders in this kind of protocol? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, we are a little bit behind Zero X in terms of like marketing, PR, right? Yeah, because before we did ICO, their project is, is, is already in the process of the you know, development. Mm. Um, Kyber is uh, a little bit later than us, but Kyber has, you know, a Vitalik as the uh, advisor, so have this big advantage of, uh, for PR. Yes. But I think in terms of design, I think we are superior to Zero X. And in terms of um, this, um, it's, I think it's also from design perspective, we are more fundamental than Kyber. Because Kyber is a asymmetric model, meaning that the uh, market maker and the normal users, they take different rules. Right. They follow different rules, they, they follow different, uh, they have different uh, responsibilities. But just imagine what happens if a market maker in Kyber's system, they run out of money, they run out of, they are out of stock. Exactly. And they need to provide a lot, they need to buy a lot of tokens. Yep. How do they buy? And, 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 and I they think, and, to fall back to zero X or 
uh, Lupri or go to the centralized uh, exactly. exchanges. Exactly. And what's exciting about yours is it doesn't require someone to manage the money. It doesn't require that, that, that store of cash or that store of token in that sense. So that's a really yes. exciting thing for Loopring because that's, again, still different to uh, OX and Kyber. Let's, let's go to your team, Dan. <clears throat> your team is incredibly small, but well, it's not incredibly small, but it's incredibly strong. Your team is not only incredibly strong, but it's really focused on engineering. So you've got a really strong tech base, which again relates to what we're talking about. You're going to that, that foundation. What's your plan, though, with the team in the next year? Well, that's a good question. Um, we want to keep the team still small and solid. We are going to recruit some more people, but uh, we're not going to expand like crazy, right? right. So maybe, uh, maybe uh, expand the team up to 20 at most. Right. At most. Uh, it really depends on, um, you know, what we are going to deliver and, uh, you know, uh, the roadmap. Sure. So how, how we, if we can beat our uh, deadlines. Yes. So uh, still f uh, focus on engineering. Uh, we are going to, actually, we just hired another PR person, but we are not going to hire a lot. Right. We are not going to tell, to focus on telling stories because, you know, if we have de delivered a lot of stuff in terms of that, and if we need people to, to tell those stories about our deliveries, we can hire people. Otherwise, we don't. Exactly. And on that note, Dan, how imperative do you think this social climate is and the social space? Because it's unlike anything we've seen in history in that there are three areas, one of them obviously being the tech, the next one being the team, and, and then, that, then, then the, that being dispersed into the, you know, the social media and so, and so people can access this information. So the reason why I ask you directly is you can see that Ethereum are pretty, pretty good at their PR. So do you think it is really important that we address um, re, the PER a bit more with companies like, say, Loopring? Do you think that needs to I be a look? But it's going to change over time. If you look at the um, cons the structure of the current uh, crypto, uh, crypto investors, right? A lot of them are not uh, professionals. No. So they don't understand the white paper. Right. They don't know GitHub. Right. Right. Let alone the code itself. So PR is really important for them to make the story attractive. Right. right? But later, sooner or later, if after the Wall Street guys you know walk into this this um, crypto investment, they are going to hire some professional to look at the projects. Yes. And so from that moment on, I think the project will, will with real uh, with solid solutions. Yes. With uh, technologies uh, you know built into their code base, will have a better chance to get the attention of the Wall Street uh, people, right? I think that's a Those very, secrets. very wise point, and it makes a lot of sense to me because uh, Min from uh, Icon Foundation said exactly the same thing recently in an interview. In, he literally said the focus for his company is actually on the technology, it's on the platform, it's on the foundation. And again, that harps back to what you're saying in that, yes, of course, PR is relevant, but right now, the, the focus has to be the quality of the product. Exactly. Unless you, the team want to make money and run away, right? right? Otherwise, if you want to keep your reputation, if you are really enthusiastic about what you are working on, I think you have to think from a long-term perspective, right? Exactly. So uh, I think looping is maybe the last thing I would like to work on as an engineer. Yep. So I really want to uh, be a proud of this, this uh, protocol. Um, that's, I think that's my legacy. <laughs> Maybe. I, I think it's. So been, I, I really want to make it work. Dan, I think it's amazing you said that because really what you're saying is that you're putting everything into this. You know, you're really putting everything into it. You have a lot of skills as well. Let's talk about given your skill sets. You're very well respected in the in the blockchain space. Let's talk about partnerships. Um, I know you can't talk a lot about them, and we won't name names. But in relation to you know what it's going to do for Loopring in the future. You know, can you give us a bit of direction in some ways of what you're thinking about doing or the things you do know without disclosing too much? Mm -hmm. So initially we want to release our own wallet, our own uh, uh, ring mining software. The reason is that if we want to convince some, somebody, we'd better convince them with real working product. 
right? Right. So after that, I think Wallis are our customer, our, our potential partners. We are not going to work with exchanges because what you know, they have solid uh, income, they have this cash flow, huge cash flow. Yes. They are not going to adapt a decentralized way in li- until no. the moment they are, they are forced to, right? That's right. But Wallis, they don't have income. Mm-hmm. They have traffic, they have a user base, they have they don't have a good way of you know making money. Mm-hmm. So Blueprint can help them to uh, become the entry point for future token exchange. And that's yeah. amazing. You can that is just amazing. Imagine, just, just imagine in the future that you can do everything with your wallet. You can transfer money. You can you know do trading. Everything. You don't have to do mm-hmm. deposit, uh, withdraw. You know a KYC to get your you know. If I see white listed, you don't yes. have to go through anything. I think right? that's incredible. And it's, it also means that eventually, I, I, it's a question I suppose I need to pose to you, is that centralized exchanges could t- potentially become obsolete and, and redundant if these things work because people will move around them and go straight to this method. Mm, in the long run, I think for some people who are not really... Um, who cannot learn about the private key, how to manage their private key. I think centralized exchanges still have a chance to provide service for them, right? Right. And for a fiat money and a token exchange, I think centralized exchange will still play a very important role. Sure. But if it comes to crypto to crypto trades, I think a lot of those trades, especially for like international trades, uh, trades between institutes, sure. uh, trades that requires anonymity, and I think these will be uh, go to will go to the uh, decentralized exchange of the wallet. Right. Well, let's move across to one in particular. And obviously, I don't know how much you can talk about this, but let's talk about Binance. We know that there's some interconnections, uh, particularly with that exchange. Is there anything you can tell us about that? Uh, I think I know the founder, uh, Chang Peng. He's a really uh, talented guy, and he has a lot of experience. Um, working on the exchanges, right? Right. Um, besides that, I think I don't uh, want to disclose anything. Sure. No, so, no I totally understand. And, I, and we appreciate when you comment like that because that's obviously part of your business model and your business plan. Uh, if we go across to the technology now, we talk about the, the beta stage and we're moving to 2.0, 2.0. Can you tell us about that for next year? Uh, yes. Actually, we are going to release a roadmap for next year. Uh, very soon, uh, by the end of this month, okay. and uh, a lot of things uh, were discussed in the roadmap. Um, so one important task for us is to de- deliver like three version, uh, versions of the looping wallet. Wow. I think end of uh, February, the, the alpha release is going to be there. This one is a working prototype. We can treat real cryptocurrencies with this alpha release. Wow. Or we can try the beta one, I don't know. And then we are going to have a totally re- redesigned uh, version. And so the interaction will be totally different. Okay. Uh, what uh, that we call a version two release. I think that will be um, maybe late uh, April or May. Uh, the second version will be released. Right. And then by the end of the year, we are going to polish it to release another version. Um, so one thing we haven't decided is whether we are going to deliver a, a app, uh, iPhone, iOS, iOS or Android app. That's something we haven't decided yet. Right, because I was going to ask you about that because if you are moving into, uh, for example, I was talking with Qlink yesterday and they're focused mm-hmm. on apps as a key point for access around the world. And obviously if mm-hmm. you do have something like that coupled with a protocol, that's very, you know, very accessible then and would be extremely exciting. We- we are not decided to. We haven't decided to do that because we have a partner who are going to deliver this wallet. Right. You know, right. App. And it, we don't want to compete with with sure. them. Right. And, and the fact that you do have that partnership alone is exciting, because apps are accessible <laughs> and people use their hard these kind of hardware more than anything. You know, and and more to the point, it's accessible globally. You know, you don't need a center point. You don't need centralized mechanisms. You can access it. So that's great. Then, just to finish off, because I know you're so busy, if I asked you to think about the year 2020, you know, so you get the privilege of uh, hindsight, and you're sitting in your 
your office and you're just looking at what you've achieved, what do you think? What do you see for Loopring? Well, um, if like 20% of all the crypto to crypto trading happens on top of Loopring, that will really make me happy and satisfied. Well, I certainly hope that you achieve it. You have put the hard yards in. You have an engineering team that's second to none. You have the intellect and the skill sets to do it. I wish you all the very best, my friend. It's the CEO, Daniel Wang. Thank you so much for your time. And we can't wait to hear from you in the future. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Brad. It's really nice for, for me to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you.